So as uh, we continue through the epistle of James, which is written by the biological half-brother of Jesus Christ, we come to the place where James compares two kinds of wisdom, unspiritual wisdom and, and heavenly wisdom. Would you like to know the difference between the two types of wisdom? Of course. Then listen together from James chapter 3 and verses 13 through 18. I was going to read it from my pew Bible, but my pew Bible's gone. But it is in your pew Bible. Thank you, sir. It is in your pew Bible. Would you look up James chapter 3 and verses 13 through 18? And we will read it together. And that's on page 1,734. 1,724. 1,724. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap the harvest of righteousness." The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, remember, James wrote this letter to people who were already Christians. And in it, he basically says, if you're a Christian, you will live an honorable life and do good works with humility. Can you think of some examples of people who have lived an honorable life? You could probably think of some. Perhaps you might think of Mother Teresa, who dedicated her life to serving the poor and the sick, displaying humility and compassion and selflessness, embodying the qualities of wisdom, mercy, and sincere love for others. Or maybe you might think of someone like Fred Rogers, the beloved host of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, who dedicated his career to educating and nurturing children through kindness, empathy, and understanding, and promoting peace and genuine care for others in his community and beyond. Or maybe you might think of someone like Martin Luther King Jr., who bravely and peacefully fought for civil rights and promoted harmony, righteousness, compassion. Though all of these examples are public figures who had notoriety and fame, fame and notoriety was not their goal. They did what they did with humility and compassion, willing to sacrifice themselves for the good of others. They got notoriety and fame because, of they, because people were attracted to their wisdom and their compassion for others, their purity, their sincerity. It was attractive it's interesting to note that all three were Christian leaders, and they were simply living out what they believed. Their faith and their love for God led them to have love and compassion for other people as well. People saw it and noticed it and were attracted to it. They knew that there was something special. Of course, Jesus is the ultimate example of a man who lived an honorable life with good works and humility. He gave up the glory of heaven humbled himself, became a servant, lived a perfect life on earth for the sake of others, and even died for sinners who didn't deserve his grace and forgiveness, but desperately needed it. Jesus is the embodiment of goodness 
and wisdom. He is the example that the greatest examples of people on earth that we can think of, like the ones I mentioned and others, looked up to him and tried to emulate his way of living. An honorable life, according to James, is one marked by humility and good conduct and wisdom that is pure and peace-loving and considerate and merciful and impartial and sincere, resulting in peace and righteousness. Christians who Christians are to live an honorable life and do good works with humility. Who have you known personally in your life? Like a person that you lived near in your community, someone that meant something in your life, who had lived an honorable life, done good works with humility. They inspired you. If you think of them now, you know that they inspired you to live better to do better, to be more humble, to be more giving, to be more sincere. That is true wisdom. Worldly wisdom has an appearance of wisdom. It has the false promise of success, but it is a lie. It is demonic, and it leads to sin, suffering, and death. James says that worldly wisdom is full of envy and selfish ambition. Envy is a feeling of frustrated inferiority, where you are jealous of others and what they have. And ambition, which can be a positive attribute that drives people to achieve goals and to succeed, it's a good thing. But when ambition is coupled with envy and selfishness, it becomes sinful, a very negative thing that is focused solely on personal gain, often at the expense of others. And perhaps you can think of some people who embodied the selfish ambition of worldly wisdom. You might think of someone like Bernie Madoff, the financier who orchestrated one of the largest Ponzi schemes in history, defrauding thousands of investors out of billions of dollars purely for personal financial gain, with no regard for the devastating impact that it had on his victims. Or perhaps you might think of someone like Adolf Hitler, the leader of Nazi Germany, whose ambition for power and dominance led to World War II and the Holocaust resulting in immense suffering and loss of life. James 3.16 says, For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. And sadly, we often see this kind of demonic, worldly wisdom in the world leaders around us. And we need to pray hard in these times in which we live. Because the Bible tells us, and history tells us, how bad that kind of wisdom is and what it leads to. Can't you see that worldly, what worldly wisdom leads to? It leads to conflict and strife, dishonesty and deception pride and arrogance, short-term gains with long-term consequences, and discontent and unhappiness. Be very careful of anyone who is full of worldly wisdom. You can clearly see where it leads. The Bible tells us. History tells us. And yet people are still manipulated and misled by people with worldly wisdom. You don't want any part of the kingdom they are trying to build. In verse 17, James tells us a better way. Godly wisdom. This is the wisdom that comes from God above. Heavenly wisdom. The wisdom Christians should seek. But the wisdom 
that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. For wisdom to be pure means that it is free from moral corruption, selfish motives, and deceit. It is characterized by sincerity, integrity, and a focus on what is right and just. Godly wisdom prioritizes truth, goodness, and the well-being of others, reflecting a heart and mind aligned with God's will and his values. Godly wisdom is peace-loving and promotes harmony, reconciliation, and understanding among people. Godly wisdom fosters an environment of cooperation and mutual respect, prioritizing the well-being of relationships and community. Godly wisdom is considerate, mindful of others' feelings and needs and their perspectives. It shows compassion, empathy, and respect, and seeks to understand and value the experiences of other people. Godly wisdom avoids harshness and insensitivity, instead promoting kindness, patience, and gentleness in all relationships and decisions. And godly wisdom is submissive, meaning that it is willing to listen and to be open to reason and to yield to others when it is appropriate. It has a humble, teachable spirit that values collaboration and respects authority. Godly wisdom is not stubborn or argumentative, but it is flexible, cooperative, and ready to consider others' viewpoints and make adjustments for the greater good. Godly wisdom is full of mercy. It shows compassion and forgiveness. It prioritizes grace, reflecting a heart that is generous and ready to help others without judgment or condemnation. Godly wisdom bears good fruit, meaning that it produces positive, tangible outcomes in a person's actions and character. This includes acts of kindness, generosity, righteousness, that benefit others and contribute to the well-being of the whole community. Godly wisdom is impartial, fair, and just, treating all people equally without favoritism or bias. Godly wisdom is sincere, genuine, honest, and free from pretense or deceit. It does not manipulate or deceive but is transparent, trustworthy, fostering trust and credibility. This is godly wisdom. Now think about these two very different kinds of wisdom. Earthly wisdom that comes from hell and leads to destruction. And godly wisdom that comes from God in heaven and leads to eternal life. Wisdom from above is what truly leads a person to a life of peace, righteousness, and genuine fulfillment. James, the brother of Christ, challenges us to embody this wisdom in our daily lives, living with humility, purity, peace, consideration, mercy, good fruits, impartiality, and sincerity. Now, the ultimate example of godly wisdom is found in Jesus Christ. He, lives and, he lived an honorable life, full of mercy and truth. He gave himself up for us so that we might be reconciled to God and to one another. As we seek to follow his example, we are called to come together in unity and love, reflecting on his grace in all that we do.